Over the past week, we've had some extremes of weather, from what could possibly be the hottest day of the year, through to heavy rain with threats of floods. It seems at the moment that the threatened thunderstorms might not appear. Now, storms can be amazing, indeed awesome, to watch. When we lived in Peterborough, a whirlwind hit the area, and we were lucky enough to see it touch down on the fens at the edge of the city. I'm not entirely sure why, but my instinctive reaction was to ask Mike to drive towards it so that I could get a better picture. And to be fair, the snap I took on my phone did make it onto the BBC News website. But storms aren't so great when you're caught in the middle of them. At best, you might get a bit wet and blown about. At worst, they are incredibly destructive, lethal even. In our Gospel reading this week, Jesus and the disciples are in a boat, heading over to the other side of the lake, along with some other boats, when a gale hits and they're battered by the waves. We're told that Jesus had been teaching the crowds from the boat before they set off, and once they moved away from the shore, Jesus fell asleep, catching up on some rest after a busy time teaching. Apparently tired enough, to sleep through a storm, because it was the disciples who woke him rather than the winds and waves. Now at least some of the disciples would have been very happy being on the lake. We know several of them were fishermen before they started to follow Jesus, so would have been very used to being on the water, and had probably weathered a fair number of storms. But this one was different. They were scared. They were afraid that they would perish in this great gale. So they wake Jesus up, unable to understand how he can be so calm, how he can stay sleeping peacefully when they when they all might be about to die. Upon waking, Jesus's reaction is calm and authoritative. We're told he rebukes the wind and commands the sea to be still, calling for peace. The wind stops blowing and the sea is still just as Jesus commands. And the disciples, well, they're still scared, just in a different way. Now they're scared of Jesus. Who is this that even the wind and the waves obey him? He asks them why they're afraid and why they have so little faith. They have seen him do quite a few miracles by this point. They've heard him teaching. He has called them to follow him and they've responded to that call. But when the rubber hit the road, or when the sea, when the storm hit the sea, to be more precise, their lack of faith showed. But we know that they continued to follow him, inspired perhaps by what they'd witnessed on the lake, seeing more healings, hearing more teaching, and ultimately witnessing his death and resurrection. They had their wobbles along the way. They often had doubts or got confused. But apart from Judas, They had faith and stuck with Jesus. They knew it was worthwhile. So what can we learn from this story? Even when they were filled with doubt and fear, deep down, the disciples knew that turning to Jesus was the best thing to do. When the pandemic hit last year, many, many of us were not surprisingly afraid. Some were worried about their health and their loved ones. Others were worried about the impact of loss of income. Others were isolated and afraid of what that would do to them. Others felt overwhelmed by the demands on them, particularly those in key worker professions. One thing that churches across the world found was that people turned to God, either engaging with churches locally, online, over the phone, by post. More people were watching songs of praise, for example, and listening to the weekly service on the radio. More people were praying and asking for prayer. When people were on their knees, they stayed there and prayed. It was famously said in 1914, there are no atheists in the trenches. When life gets difficult, people do instinctively turn to God. Sometimes when we're struggling, often when we're struggling most, that's when we turn to God for help. But sometimes we don't, either because we forget to, 
or because we think we can or should manage by ourselves. Through reaching out to Jesus for help, the disciples realised that they could trust him, that he was more powerful than they realised. They even started to realise that Jesus was in fact God. As we experience God at work in our lives, we can learn to trust God more and more, even when things don't make much sense, even when we feel like we're at sea. Where do you feel that your faith is at compared to the start of the pandemic? Do you feel closer to God? Do you feel more able to trust God now? Or do you feel further away from God as restrictions are lifting and life is getting busier again? Are you still praying as much or are you distracted by other things? If you've had your vaccine and are feeling safer, do you feel you need God as much to protect you as you did before? Life is always full of twists and turns. The last year has been a pretty big twist in what we might have expected. And within that bigger picture, we've all had our own highs and lows. But the disciples realised that Jesus could bring peace right in the middle of the storm. So many of us can testify to God bringing peace in the midst of our own storms. Even in the midst of the most violent storm, the voice of Jesus can bring a peace that passes all understanding. A peace that doesn't make sense. When we cry out to God as the disciples did, God will always answer. It doesn't mean that we won't face storms. We will. That is part of being human. Our New Testament reading this week has a long list of storms that Paul faced. But like the disciples, he still trusted God and kept following Jesus. He encouraged those Christians in Corinth to really commit to following Jesus, to get all they could out of that relationship, not to accept the grace of God in vain. And I would encourage us all to do the same. The God who has sustained us over the past year, the God who has sustained us right through our lives, will continue to do so. It's easy to forget that at times. Once the storm has calmed down and we don't feel as desperate, it's easy to think we can manage without God again. And at other times, when the storm comes, it can feel as if we're going to be overwhelmed and we forget that God has got us through in the past. We look at the difficulty, we look at the storm, rather than turning our eyes to God. We can get distracted by the size of the waves and the darkness of the clouds. And in doing so, forget to call out to Jesus. The more we focus on God, the more we turn to God day by day, no matter what the metaphorical weather is in our lives, the easier it is to remember that God is with us. And the easier it is for us to help others remember too. Whether you're in the sunshine or a storm, reach out to God in prayer today. If you're in that storm and struggling, Ask others to help you find God in it. Ask others to pray for or with you. If you're in the sun, is there someone you can encourage? Is there someone you can pray for and help them know that God is with them? Sharing that peace that you yourself has found in him. Let's pray. Faithful God, when we are battered by the storms of life, Help us to trust you and give us peace, we pray. When the sailing is smooth, help us to keep trusting and to be faithful to you, we pray. Amen. <laughs>